In this TaxLayer ProWeb training video, we're going to cover a more specific topic in the ProWeb application, the entry of a Schedule C business income or loss on a client's tax return. Now, I've pulled up a client's return. I've already entered the basic information. As, a, as you can see, I'm in the federal section here. I can click on the Enter Myself button, or I can begin typing the word Schedule, which will pull up all of the schedules in the program, and I'll click on Go to Schedule C. This takes me to the Schedule C entry page, and the Schedule C is made up of four sections. Now we've taken those and broken them up into their component parts just to make data entry a little easier. The business name, address, and business type are all on one screen to make it easier to complete. First, did the business have a business name? And the name of our client's business is Lawn Doctor. And we'll give the business and employer identification number. And the address of the business. We'll go ahead and fill that in. And the zip code for the business. We'll automatically fill in the city and state. One thing I'll mention here on this screen, if your client's business did not include a DBA, a doing business as, then the program will assume that the client's personal name and social security number will be in the header. Next is the business code. You can select the code from this comprehensive list or you can enter the type of business. For example, our client is a landscaper and that will satisfy the IRS requirement as well. Click continue and we're now at what we call the Schedule C main menu. Now this main menu covers basic information, questions about the operation of the business, income information, and expenses. We've taken the expenses portion and we've broken it into its component parts which makes it a little easier to navigate. Nine times out of ten the default answers to the questions about the operation of the business are correct for most small businesses that you'll encounter. If you have something that's atypical on the return you may have to go into this menu. Now entering income from the business I'm going to click on begin and we have gross receipts or sales from the lawn care business and this is also where a 1099 K if your client had one would be entered 1099 K's come from PayPal uber or some other credit card processing company we will enter gross sales of 35,000 and click continue Next we'll jump into general expenses. General expenses. Now for this example the business does not maintain an inventory simply provides a service so we don't need to enter a cost of goods sold. Remember you only need to enter a cost of goods sold for a company that maintains an inventory. So here in the general expenses screen uh, let's say we had five hundred dollars in advertising for the landscape business. Uh, we had an expense for legal and professional services, let's say of $1,500. We had an entry for basic supplies, gas and other supplies. And we'll click continue. Now you can see that the program is automatically calculating the return at the top of the screen. Next, let's select uh, car and truck expenses. Our client's in the landscape business, so he's got to have a truck, and the truck was placed in service. We'll describe it as truck, and it was placed in service, we'll say 010115 and the total number of business miles was 18,000 
and total number of commuting miles was a thousand and he had three thousand in other mileage. He does have another vehicle available for personal use so I'm going to check that off. Was his vehicle available for personal use during off-duty hours? Yeah, we'll say yeah to that. And we do have evidence to support the deduction and yes, the evidence is written. So I'm going to click the continue button and let's watch the calculation update. And if your client had more than one vehicle, you can click here and add each truck. But for our purposes, I'm going to click continue. Next, we'll touch on depreciation. Depreciation can be complex or very straightforward depending on the asset that's being depreciated. I'm going to click into assets and we'll enter let's say a computer and the date this computer was placed in service again we'll just say 010115 the cost of this computer he bought a nice Mac so we're gonna say twenty six hundred dollars percentage of the business use is 100 and accumulated depreciation he depreciated it on his 2016 return we'll just enter a figure there depreciation method we're going to use makers five year 200 percent this was not a mid-quarter property the asset was not disposed of so I'm gonna click continue and that's really all that's necessary for depreciating a simple business asset so I'm going to click continue and continue again and so now to review we've entered the income on the Schedule C we've entered our general expenses our car and truck expenses and our depreciation and we didn't go into other expenses but that's basically a catch-all category we'll click on that and see what's there again you could just enter a description and the amount in this other expenses category at this point let's go over adding a 1099 miscellaneous and we'll attach it to the schedule C that we've created so what I'm going to do the easiest way is to use the form finder I'm going to type in 1099 miscellaneous and I can go to form 1099 miscellaneous now and we'll type in a federal ID for the payer and the payer's name payer's address and zip code The recipient's name, recipient's address is already filled. And we're going to say in box 7, we have some non-employee compensation of $2,500. And I'm going to scroll down, click Continue. And I'm going to add this 1099 miscellaneous to the Schedule C by clicking the Add button. And so now if I check the income on the return on the Schedule C, we've got a total income from the 1099 miscellaneous, $2,500, and our gross receipts or sales are $35,000, which is what we originally entered. Now one thing I want to point out before we leave the Schedule C, looks like our client has a fairly substantial federal amount due let's look at the reason why what I'm going to do is go into summary and print section I just want to point this out very quickly here's the 1040 on the screen I'm gonna to go to page 2 of the 1040 and because our client had a Schedule C the program automatically calculated the self-employment tax that our client would owe for his lawn care business so probably what we would do, hopefully our client entered in some estimated quarterly payments somewhere during the year and he'll be getting a nice refund. I did want to point out that the program will automatically calculate the self-employment tax and it will also automatically calculate 
one half or the deductible part of the self-employment tax in the adjustment section on the return. One final item before we leave this Schedule C training video. I've returned to the federal section of the return. If I click on enter myself, I'm at the income section of the return. My income tab is highlighted. And let's say, for instance, I needed to add a separate Schedule C. Let's say our, uh, our client has a construction company that's not related to his landscape business. I have the option right here to add a Schedule C income from another business. Just wanted to point that out before we leave our Schedule C video. Hopefully all of this will help you somewhere down the line and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.